Now, I discovered uh, practicing tax law and performing magic that there were a lot of parallels between the professions. And it turns out there's a lot of parallels between uh, those two professions and your work. Here are some things that we have in common. The first thing is that everyone expects us to perform the impossible. But that's okay because that's what every business is about. Every business is about problem solving. Solving your customers' problems, your clients' problems, internally, externally, however you want to phrase it, it all boils down to problem solving. Now magicians and tax lawyers solve problems in the exact same manner, which I'm going to reveal to you here uh, this afternoon. The second thing that we have in common is that the only thing constant in life is change, that old Zen philosophical statement. Now the reason that's so important is because if the only thing constant in life is change, it means that the assumptions you work with today may not apply tomorrow. Very important. Because the way that magicians fool you is they force you to make certain assumptions. And if you can predict how people think, then it's easily to move forward and break new ground. So I'm going to discuss a little bit this afternoon on how to challenge assumptions on an ongoing basis so you're the leader breaking new ground all the time. Like I find it interesting, again, in your book, you make the point that um, just as there is a process in creating the effect in magic, so too there is a process in creating the effect, if we want to use that term, in business. Well, I view that the effect is the same as an objective in business. An objective, right. And uh, magicians don't care how we get there as long as we ultimately achieve that, that effect. And I believe that many people in business feel pressure to rush ahead and look busy because we equate physical activity with work instead of using their brain to say, have I really defined that objective or have I really defined that effect? Not from my point of view, but from the customer's point of view, the person whose problem it is we're trying to solve. I believe that all businesses, all activities are the same problem solving. We get retained either economically or just personally to solve people's problems, to help them. And uh, we can save a lot of energy and other resources if we really start off with, do we know what the real problem is? We have to ask questions. We have to probe to see what is the real objective here. Yeah. So that's always the, the starting point. And then you can move on from, from that point to start developing creative solutions. Spread right across the stage, ladies and gentlemen, because in a moment I'm going to try an experiment in reading their minds. Thank you very much for joining us. You may uh, join the the lineup as well, right across the stage, spread out right across the stage. Now, I take it none of you brought with you a deck of cards. Nobody brought a deck of cards very well, we'll use mine. A simple experiment with a common language you can see with the, the camera, a pack of playing cards, each and every single one different. Where's what we're going to do? I'm going to manipulate the cards. You know, I love manipulating cards like this and changing them, making them vanish and dealing them to certain people. To prevent me from manipulating them, I'm going to take this elastic band, wrap it around the pack, and I'm going to toss it out to each of the individuals here so they can just open the pack and look at a card. So I will toss it to you, Brad. Wherever you like, open it up, just look at a card, and then we'll just toss it along the chain. You can, of course, think of the ace of spades on the bottom, but it's kind of obvious, but do what you want. Okay? Here we go. Catch. Good catch. Just open it up and take a look at a card. You got one? Pass, toss the pack to Norman. Norman, take a peek of a card. You've got one. And right over to Donna. Take a peek. And then Donna, once you've done that, you've got one. You can toss it over to Ken. Ken, take a peek of a card. And then right over to Doug. Doug, take a peek of a card. And then you can toss the pack right back to me. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, I'm going to ask these participants to merely think of their cards. I'm going to divine their thoughts and try to read their minds to see which cards they have that graphic visual image of. So concentrate on your cards. Think of it over and over just in your mind. Very good. I'm getting an eight of hearts, a king of clubs, a three of diamonds, and a ten of spades. If I name the card that you were thinking of, please return to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. you look a little puzzled there, Doug. Well, in a few moments, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take you behind the scenes and explain exactly how that was performed so you too can go home and fool your family and friends, but you'll also learn a little bit about how magic is constructed. Here's a brain teaser. 92 minus 63 equals 1. How do you move one number in such a fashion that the equation becomes true? 
Well, it's tough. You have to think laterally, literally and figuratively twice. You have to invert the nine upside down so it's a six, but move it to an exponential number. So it's two to the sixth power minus 63 equals one. That's tough. Now what makes it tough, however, is that once you made the assumption that the problem had to be solved on a particular linear plane, it doesn't matter how hard you work, you will never get the answer. You have to think smart all the time by challenging assumptions. One other little brain teaser and then I'll move on. Imagine you have three cups of coffee in front of you and 36 cubes of sugar. How do you distribute the 36 cubes of sugar amongst the three cups of coffee so you have an odd amount of sugar in each cup? Well, the answer I like is you put one, in one, one cube in one cup, one cube in the second cup, and 34 cubes in the third cup, which you have to admit is an odd amount of sugar in a cup of coffee. <laughs> now, most people hate those types of puzzles, but they will win you a free drink in an airport bar or lounge if you're ever stranded. They also illustrate another point, and the point is this. I intentionally put 92 minus 63 equals 1 before 36 cubes of sugar, 3 cups of coffee, in order to trick you. Because I was hoping you would say, when you see this second puzzle, here's another one of those mathematical puzzles I hate so much. As soon as you made the assumption that this problem was the same type as the previous problem, that this deal is the same type as the previous deal, you were never going to be open to new insights that could provide you with that creative advantage. If the only thing constant in life is change, every deal has its nuances that you have to look for in order to really deliver that effective solution to your clients. Archimedes said, give me a place to stand and I'll move the earth. He's describing the power of leverage. So what is a lever? A lever is really nothing more than a tool available to you. And tools can be things like the family, the friends you work with, the firm you work for, the industry you work with, much broader than the just traditional notion of leverage that is applied in the financial community. So I urge you to seek out as many levers as you can within your organization, the people that you work with, and the resources that are available to you. And if you do that, you will discover you too can move the earth. Thank you very much for your time, your attention, and most of all, a vow of secrecy I know each and every single one of you will give me, whereby you promise not to reveal to any other living individual the secret to the magic trick I shared with you here this afternoon. Thank you very much.